Hello, the purpose of this video is to provide an introduction to TensorFlow in R through a simple linear regression example. TensorFlow is an open source framework with an extensive ecosystem of tools for building and training machine learning models. TensorFlow, along with Keras, are very popular for building neural networks. So how can we fit a linear regression with TensorFlow? Well, a linear regression can be seen as a neural network with no hidden units and no activation function, in other words, with a linear activation. So let's take a look at the code for fitting a simple linear regression with TensorFlow. First of all, if you need to install TensorFlow, then install the Keras package, which will install TensorFlow and the required packages. After that, load the TensorFlow package and then run this command, install underscore TensorFlow. Okay, let's load the Keras package. And the first step would be to define the model structure. One note here, Keras provides two application programming interfaces, APIs, for creating models, the sequential API and the functional API. For this example, we will be working with the sequential API. That's why here we start with this command, Keras underscore model underscore sequential. We pipe this into the layer underscore dense function to create a fully connected layer. But this will be the output layer with one neuron or unit and with linear activation as I mentioned before. The input underscore shape argument here refers to the number of predictors that will be used in this regression. As I'm going to fit a simple linear regression then we only have one predictor. Okay, the next step would be to compile the model. So we pipe the linear underscore model object into the compile function. And we have to define these three arguments, loss, optimizer, and matrix. The loss refers to the loss function, and this will be the mean square error because we are fitting here a regression model. Then we define the optimizer. I will be working here with the Adam optimizer. There are several optimizers. You can find more, more information in the Keras package. So if you go to the uh, documentation of the Keras package and go to the optimizers uh, index, then you will find that there are other optimizers like uh, RMSC Prop or SGD, among others. Here we will be using this argument, the learning rate. The learning rate defaults to 0 0.0. 0.1, but I'm going to use a larger number here, 0 0.01. Finally, we can include a list of metrics to be evaluated during training and validation. So here I will be also including this mean absolute error metric. Note that we don't have to overwrite the linear underscore model well uh, with the assign error here because compile and also the fit function later as we will see they modify the model in place. Okay, so let's define the model structure. And the first time that you run that code, you will see these error messages, but you can ignore them. Okay, the next step would be to compile the model, and then we can continue by taking a look at the summary of the linear model. So as we see here, we have a model that has been built with the sequential API, this model basically has the output layer and then there are two trainable parameters, the bias and the parameter that will be that will correspond to the slope of the predictor in the regression model. Okay, before we can fit the model, obviously we need to have some data that will be used to train the model. So I'm going to work with the auto data set where we have mpg miles per gallon as the dependent variable that that's the variable that we will be trying to predict so we create two objects here first one with the feature or predictor in this case i'm going to select the displacement variables from the data set and one important step here is that tensorflow works with either vector matrices or arrays so we have to convert this to a matrix to be able to run this does not work with tables from tidyverse okay so we create the the 
matrix with the predictor and we also create the matrix with the dependent variable okay now we can fit the linear model so we use the fit function so we pipe the linear model into the fit function and then we have to define these inputs obviously we have to define the predictors we define the dependent variable we define the number of epochs the epochs refers to the number of iterations here for the validation split i will be setting this argument to zero because i don't want to run uh, validation uh, usually you will see a value here like 0.2 meaning that 80% of the data will be used for training and the remaining 20% for validation but i want the model to be trained in the using the entire data set now i don't need to do validation and finally this verbose argument define the verbosity mode so we will be see in the output in the console we will be see one line per epoch okay let's run this code as you can see here in the viewers panel we see how the error is decreasing through each epoch and in the console we see the well for each epoch we see one line we see how much time is taking for each epoch we see the value of the loss metric the mean square error in the corresponding epoch as well as the mean absolute error okay so this is over after 500 epochs here in the upper part of this plot we have the mean square error because that was our loss function and in the lower part of the plot we have the mean absolute error so this has finished with these values for those two metrics okay let's take a look at the weights that have been calculated by this model so we have these values that are uh, close um, quite close to what uh, i would be expecting if i run this through other methods for estimating the linear regression coefficients also note that if we wanted we could change the learning rate for example if i run it with 0.01 then that would uh, make smaller steps for finding the solution and also if we change the verbose to here uh, here to zero then this will run faster so i'm going to run it again and i'm going to run it in the same in real time to see how fast this runs okay it's finished uh, well, let's take a look at the weights again they have been adjusted a little bit more okay finally if we wanted to predict on a set for example in the same training set or a, on a test set or in another new set then we use a predict function we enter the name of the model and then we enter the name of the data set so we can run that i'm going to use the training set here and i'm going to add the predicted values as a new column to the auto data set to compare the values okay so now we have the auto data set with a new column here these are the predicted values by the model these are the original values the actual values for mpg if we compare the coefficients the, with the uh, default method in base r for fitting a linear regression then we will see that the values are quite close so for example here with tensorflow we got 30.11 for the bias which is the same as the intercept here and then for the slope for the coefficient for the displacement variable then we got minus 0 0.06 which is quite close to this value over here and let's predict with the ln function and let's add those predicted values to the auto data set and let's take a look at those values and we see that the values are quite close or practically the same values just to give another point of view of what we are doing with tensorflow basically with tensorflow what we are doing is we are optimizing an objective function that corresponds to mean square errors we could do that for example with base r optimization to do something similar and then we could use a function like optim to optimize the mean square error 
for example here if I define first a function where I'm going to try to find the the values for these parameters where x1 would be the intercept or bias and x2 would be the slope or the coefficient for the predictor then we will optimize this objective function so here we will try to minimize the, the values for this and then basically because this is the mean square error so we calculate the error which is the difference between the actual values and the predicted values so this will be our model and these are the coefficients of the regression uh, because this is a mean square error so we square the values and then we calculate the average so then we can run the opt-in function and this uses different techniques for optimization uh, you can change the the method for the optimization um, for example here there are well there are several methods that can be used as we as you will see but some of them are based on the uh, gradient descent so for running this uh, optimization we enter some parameters uh, the initial values for the parameters to be optimized over so let's say that the initial values for the intercept and for the uh, slope of the regression would be could be zero and zero and they will be adjusted and then we define the optimization function so if i do this we will be uh, finding these values that are quite close to the values obtained by the LM function or by TensorFlow. So in summary, the steps that you need to create a model with TensorFlow will be first to define the model structure, then compile the model, and finally train the model with the fit function. And after that you can explore the ways of the model or predict on a new dataset. If you are interested in getting the script and the dataset that I use for this video, and I'm going to leave in the description the link so you can access these files, the, the script and the dataset. Hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.